that you're one of those guys who can actually express his feelings. There are many questions we ask each other in life. We like to make small talk by asking, Hey, what's your favorite sport, dude? Do you have any uh, favorite toilet sitting position? Did you see that uh, the new episode of Breaking Bad last night starring uh, Brian Cranston? Oh, it was, it was really good. Or the infamous question, Have you seen the Emoji Movie? Oh, oh god, just, just uttering that sends shivers down my spine. A lot of videos on my channel consist of animated movies. I love animation. It's the perfect medium to create incredible stories or watch someone fail miserably so you can laugh at them. Animation is a work of art, but sometimes people like to abuse the medium to make a massive amount of money. Point Break Case Blank The Emoji Movie Now, what can I say about this movie that hasn't been said already? This movie has been praised, teared apart, ripped limb from limb, and analyzed deeply. So what on earth could I possibly say? Well, I can just start saying random sounds. Yeah, how, how about that? I could just go like, hmm, ha <laughs> ha emoji movie, yellow, haga. How, how's that? How's that for a review on YouTube? Me just, just saying random noises and gibberish for a whole 20 minutes. The Emoji Movie is a 2017 sci-fi horror starring so many famous talents. You got Maya Rudolph from Grown Ups. Ooh, I, I, I love those movies. You got Anna Faris from The Scary Movies. You got James Corden from his car videos, you know, you know those videos where he like drives and sings and and drives those are classics you also got tj miller who you know plays the main emoji gene now tj miller is he's not he's not a good person he's a really bad person in real life so it's kind of fitting for him to be the main star of the magnum opus of animation who's more fitting to play the meh emoji than a meh human being. Now Jean is the main emoji of the emoji movie. He is a gorgeously designed character. He's yellow, he has a little puff of hair on his head, he's got tiny legs, he's yellow. Who else more fitting to be the staple of the emoji movie than a yellow emoji? See now, we're checking for accuracy on the movie. I love emojis. I send them to my girlfriend a lot, she loves them. You see, all these critics, every single one of them, is looking at the movie as something crazy. But, you know, what if we were different? What if we looked at it from what it's supposed to be? A movie about emojis. Not an actual animated movie, but more like a documentary. So the movie showcases many emojis very accurately, but it fails as showing us the important questions we all have for some emojis. Like, for example, what emoji is this one? Is this a, just a bunch of alien weenies coming out of the ground? Or what type of lettuce is this emoji? Is this romaine lettuce? Is it iceberg? I have no idea! And the emoji movie doesn't answer these questions, so on that front, it is a failure. Instead of being a documentary answering my sweaty emoji questions, the movie just attempts to be an actual movie, like with a story and stuff, which is, which is just weird. But it doesn't even have that. It doesn't even have a story. Guess what? It just rips off that episode of Fairly Odd Parents where Timmy surfs a web. So many animated movies ripped off that one episode, the Lego movie, the second Ralph movie, the Emoji movie, wait, I already said that one. Now, okay, maybe the Lego movie is like the best animated movie ever made or whatever, and maybe these like two movies in particular stole its plot, but you know what? Timmy Turner did it first, folks, but today, let's just calm down and get angry over one movie, the Emoji movie. After all said is done, after everyone has talked about it, I'm here. I'm here to beat a dead horse and remind people of the pain. So the film begins with space. You already failed, movie. That's not an emoji. That's not even the space emoji. This is Cars 2 all over again and how they showed a boat for the first thing. So we get some narration from TJ Miller. I'ma call him TJ Moji. He talks about the universe like he's some omnipotent god. Attention spans get shorter and shorter and you're probably not even listening to me right now. Who has the time to type out actual words? And that's where we come in. The most important invention in the history of communication. Emojis. We also see a bunch of kids, all of whom seem to be wearing eyeliner. Like, is that a thing that kids do now? Do we all wear eyeliner? Like, I get that some kids wear eyeliner, that's cool and all, but like, every single kid in this movie is wearing eyeliner. <laughs> it's, it's a weird design for their eyes. They all either look tired, exhausted, or they're just wearing eyeliner. But yo, go off, I guess. So this is exactly where the boomer talk comes in. The script is all like, haha, yo, kids are so dumb, they can't say words, they just send pictures on their phones because they got short 
attention spans. It's like so belittling to kids, it's amazing. I was never a kid in high school to constantly text. I was always on my phone, but I never texted with emojis or anything. Instead, I was playing like Subway Surfers or Flappy Bird like a cool kid. So this man Gene shows us his town, the town of Textopolis. And this is where I get super angry. Sure, this intro rips off Emmett's intro from the Lego movie, but the most offensive parts are how it treats its own emojis. This world has no rules to anything. Some emojis have sentience, some emojis are buildings, and some emojis are just like this lock that is used as a tool. Why is it that the briefcase gets a free life, but the lock is locked up to darkness? Was that an intentional move? Because that could actually be genius. But no, it's just the world being lazy and having no rules whatsoever. So today is like the crazy big day for Gene. He gotta go into the box cube and get scanned so he can be used as an emoji. For some reason, you can only be used as an emoji if you are like scanned. Yeah, sure. He's greeted by Smiley, who like talks about getting scanned in a way that seems like seems like a little little scanning innuendo. It's it's a big oof. Let me tell you guys, <laughs> there is nothing like getting scanned for the first time. We meet more emojis like the poop emoji and the hand emoji, but we also meet the devil, and they call him Steven. Come on, tell me you aren't just a little bit tempted. Steven, for the last time, I don't want to buy a timeshare. Hi, man. Wh why is the devil named Steven? What the movie got against my boy Steven? Why not name the devil like Kyle or like Samantha? I hate Samantha. She she's more of the devil. So the kid on the outside world picks emojis and goes for TJ Moji. TJ Moji is supposed to make the meh face, but he like prees and messes up everything. Everyone gets mad at him and calls him a malfunction. You know, like how Emmett was weird for not being like everyone else? That's exactly what happens here. But instead of being funny or full of heart, it's just forced. But something is weird about this movie. When TJ Moji tried to be scanned, I found myself mimicking the meh emoji. I was in real life just trying to do the meh emoji because I wanted to interact with this movie. This movie is so, so awful, so bad, yet it had the power over me in that moment, and I have no idea why I wanted to be a part of it. During all this, you also have High Five Guy who's like all emo and sad that he's not popular. Also, if you're wondering about the random MW2 skin that's on his finger, that's like never explained. It's not a good character design. Sure, he'd look weird if he was just completely naked hand, but look dude, am I, am I cosplaying? as a hand now? Can I go out in Halloween as James Gordon hand emoji now? Look at this, this is the best costume ever. So yeah, hand guy is sad, he's not picked as an emoji anymore. Why would they pick this hand guy for the movie to not be a popular emoji? I mean surely this emoji is way more popular than the alien ween emoji. Can we get some alien weens in the comments? Let me see some alien weens in my comments, man. So now that meh is all sad and stuff, smiley emoji takes him into the office and says that she's going to straight up delete him because he's causing so many errors on the phone. And that's dangerous for everyone. Honestly, Gene is straight up the villain of this whole movie. Just because he causes malfunction, he causes nearly everyone to get deleted and causes so many issues with hacking and jailbreaking. Wait, wait, what, what? Yo, did, did you guys hear that? That's like, that's like a segue to this week's sponsor, NordVPN. You see, if you go on your emoji device, you know, you know that phone thing that sends pictures of alien weens? You can safely protect your internet browsing and data by going to nordvpn.com slash 24 frames nick and getting 75% off a three year plan. NordVPN uses military grade encryption to protect your data. It's also available on computers too, not just your emoji device with iOS and Android versions. With new copyright laws blocking certain media in certain countries, NordVPN is the perfect way to enjoy the content you want safely and privately. Just click any one of the thousands of servers in 61 plus countries and you're good to go. So just go to nordvpn.com slash 24framesnick and use code 24framesnick for 75% off a 3 year plan and get a free month. Now back back to the pain I guess. So TJ Emoji runs away and grabs Hand Emoji and Hand Emoji leads him to a secret room where all the emojis are that never get picked exist and y'all know exactly what I'm about to say. Where is he at? Where he at man? Where's my favorite emoji? Also, this just shows how dumb these writers are. The eggplant emoji never being picked. Okay, man. Yeah, sure. Sure, dude. Yeah, yeah, sure. There's totally no one ever using the eggplant emoji. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 sure. So hand emoji talks to TJ emoji about what he should do in order to not, you know, like die. He says that he should get a hacker and hand emoji is like, oh my God, I can use this to get favorited again or something. I could be popular again. On the way out, they abuse a red dragon for absolutely zero reason. To the hand, Red Wagon! <laughs> 
Like, like, okay? Why? Why include that in the movie? And then Hand really says, bye, Felicia, to this old lady. Bye, Felicia. I, I am so upset. I am so upset at the way these emojis are talking to me. These emojis have the worst dialogue in the entire world. And yeah, that should be like a given. Oh, it's obvious that this movie would suck. Oh, it's obvious that this would have a bad script. But it's such a bad script where it's just, it's just killer. It's absolutely just dire about how bad the script is. So TJ Moji and Han sneak out of town. They go to like the outskirts of Textopolis, you know, this town that you see one minute of? Yeah, they're already leaving and we're not gonna see it ever again. So outside of the town, Han spooks TJ Moji with finger puppets. It's one of those rubber finger monster puppets from the 80s. I collected the whole set. And like, what? What is, what is the joke here? What is the joke? What does the joke have to do with phones or emojis? W what is the point? It wasn't even close to funny. This is like objectively annoying. So these dudes walk around the apps and TJ Moji goes to Facebook and we don't actually see him go into Facebook because the movie is too lazy to show us most things. So instead, it's just silhouettes that freeze eventually. TJ Moji's parents like hunt for TJ Moji to save him and like it's this whole side plot about them loving each other but you know they're just being meh emojis and it's just actually it's like the only tolerable part about this entire movie. The only part about this movie I was actually able to watch without pulling my hair is about these two dudes. TJ Moji and Hand go to a piracy app and the first thing in that app is some on the nose punk stuff. Wow, so, so original guys, way, way, way to keep it going with the, the great soundtrack. This entire movie has the worst soundtrack I've ever heard. They just picked the top three songs on the charts and just slapped them in there in the worst spots imaginable with no heart, no thought, nothing. We see a bunch of punks and jokes around this entire piracy app about the internet and it's just it's just annoying. Ralph Breaks the Internet, as much flack as it gets, honestly showed parts of the internet in a really fun, exciting way. It's cute and sure it came after the Emoji movie, but you know that's that's just not an excuse for this movie to just be so, so, so lazy. So lazy to the point where it just feels like this entire script was made by an AI. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised about that. So the gang finds this girl named Jailbreak. Jailbreak is a punk hacker girl. You know, she's independent. She, uh, she hacks things and she's a punk. I mean, honestly, I hate everything said it best when it came to her character, so I'm gonna just let his clip roll. And remember everyone, she is a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. It is imperative that you remember that she is in fact a woman. Look at the fact that she is a woman. You really need to know that she is a woman. So these dudes get chased at Candy Crush and then TJ Moji dies. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> no he doesn't die, dummies. It, it was one of the jokes in the movie. They did a joke, oh my. We also see a weird screen transition where like, okay, there are two of these in the entire movie and they just confuse you each time. They're so out of place. They're just so badly done. Who, who directed this movie? Oh, oh, this guy? Oh, this guy, oh, oh, ugh. So the dude who owned the phone hates how the phone is acting up because of TJ Moji's antics, so he makes an appointment at the phone store. The gang escapes Candy Crush and TJ Moji's parents pass YouTube. Oh, oh wow, the, they're playing, they're playing Jakey? Oh, oh god, I love that guy. You, you know, maybe, maybe this movie ain't so bad. So for some reason, these three nerds just go to Just Dance. <laughs> they, they just go to Just Dance. And they play Just Dance. And then the hand is annoying. It's all right with me. Cause I can shake it like Michael. He, that's it. That's all he is. He's just annoying. They go to Spotify and they float on the sound waves. Han dies, but they rescued him sadly. And they go to the firewall. At a firewall, TJ Moji is blasted with fire. A lot. He is constantly blasted. This entire movie makes it seem like there are stakes to this, but there, there is none. Like, this is painful to watch. There are no actual repercussions to him getting blasted with fire, so why do we care? Why is there dramatic music playing when he can get blasted 300 times over and be completely fine? So they make it past their firewall and they go to the cloud and TJ Moji hits on Jailbreak and she denies him, so he gets mad and turns himself in. Jailbreak and Hand fly to save him. Yep, they fly to save him. 
Jailbreak is able to call in a bird to fly anywhere pretty much, yet they had that whole journey through multiple apps. For why? For, for who? It wasn't for me, it wasn't for you, it wasn't for the audience having a fun journey, oh oh not at all, that is definitely not the case. So they get to TJ Moji, the whole world starts to get snapped away, and then TJ Moji is like, yo, yo check it out, I'm a gif. I guess I'm, I'm animated now. Guy sends this to girl and girl's like, yo, OMG, you can express your feelings so accurately and beautiful? Oh my god. You're like, oh my god, that emoji, dude. Oh, that emoji, man. And then the day is saved and everyone parties. They dance to some song and credits roll. <sighs> and that's the emoji movie. That is the emoji movie, man. You know what? For a movie about emojis, there's only like 20 minutes of actual emojis in the entire movie. And that's, that's disappointing itself. As many of you may know, the movie has a terrible message, and not even directly about the phone. Oh, oh no, it's just a really awful message in TJ Moji himself. His entire purpose is to live in a cube, and just go about it one way. But the movie somehow fakes an inspirational tale that he's more than just one thing, and he could do so many more things in life. Yet, at the end of the movie, he is still in the cube. So like, he's doing more, he is approaching it multiple ways, but he is still in one tiny box. His outlook is just different. He didn't really strive for anything different in life. He just changed his viewpoint. What kind of message is that for kids? To tell them to just stay in the tiny little box that they are in, but just, you know, change your viewpoint of it. Wh what kind of message is that? Ma they should break out of that box like he did in the beginning. Y you had it. You had a good message going and then you just kind of ruined it by the end. Every character in this movie sucks. Look at hand again. Look at this boy. We are all going to collectively hate this character. We're going to stare at him until we are all collectively unhappy. This is what happens when we let memes go on way too far. The director himself has made like one original movie, you know, you know, Igor. Yeah, that, that was all right, I guess. I think it was a good album at least. <laughs> Uh, and TJ Moji is honestly just the villain of the entire movie. He causes everything bad to happen. And luckily, since he has some special power at the end of the movie, the last three seconds of the movie, he's able to save everything and just unfix his mess up. But he's the villain. He causes everyone to get scared. He causes everyone to panic. Like, Smiley is honestly just trying to do her job and save everybody. So why are we even rooting for TJ Moji to actually get through the movie? He's not a good person or anything. He's just running away like a scared little coward. Little, little boy. Little emoji boy. Little, little e-boy. And that's what, that's what all these guys are. They're all e-boys. Emojis are just e-boys. A lot of the audio in this movie just seems to be incredibly terrible. At one point, behind the cube things, and like, one of the first scenes, Scenes, there's a loud ringing that it just hurts. Listen to this. Oh, my old cube. Uh, hey, guy, Mike. My name's not Mike. That is in the movie, and it's headache inducing. The emoji movie? More like sick emoji movie. And then at other points, characters' lines will just be drastically higher than others, so it's like loud for no reason. I mean, seriously, this is just terrible. I honestly know that all of this is probably intentional, though. The movie had to be intentionally lazy, because Sony Pictures animation is great. I mean, even before everyone loved them because of Spider-Verse, Cloudy with a chance of meatballs, was phenomenal and really Really underrated. I'm serious, it's actually a really good movie. So no doubt, this movie was marketed and made to drive in hate dollars. It honestly always happens, but I know what you guys are thinking. Yo, yo Nick, how are you going to talk about the Emoji movie without collabing with Jax Films, one of the movie's creators? And don't worry guys, he's here too to talk about his favorite movie. The Emoji movie. <laughs> Thanks Jack, I love you man. You know, it really is good that the meme of this movie has died down though. It only came out two years ago. And and no one has been talking about it all of 2019. There are other animated movies to be hyped over and fond over or get angry about. I'm glad this movie was so quickly forgotten. There's no like guilty pleasure here or hate watching even. Like I can hate watch movies and laugh at them and enjoy them with others, but this does not have that. It's offensive towards people with brains, eyes, and everyone that wants to know what this emoji is, just like me.